Hey there everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood Pyro Banerkly and today I will hopefully be giving you the, the definitive guide on how to play Pyro effectively and use all of their abilities to the fullest. I want to give a quick shout out to Dr. Pyro on Steam for giving me the inspiration to make this guide. They have their own up on Steam community as well, but when I looked at it, it seemed outdated due to it being made prior to the Jungle Inferno update. So I considered this an update slash video edition of that guide, link to the original in the description. Anyway, let's get into the guide. So, the Pyro is an offense class and is one of the harder hitting classes in the game. They have an average movement speed and have 175 health, the third highest in the game tied with the Demo Man. Pyro generally does really well up close because of their flames not reaching very far. While the Pyro is generally good up close, they perform much better when the enemy is unaware, which to be fair you could say that about any class, but shh, this is still important. The Pyro's arsenal is pretty easy to understand. They come equipped with the Flamethrower, a close range weapon which deals fire damage and sets the enemy on fire. This is what is known as Afterburn. Afterburn is based on how long you are hitting the enemy with flames from your Flamethrower. So for example, hitting them with a few flames will make the Afterburn last much shorter than if you hit them with flames for significantly longer. If you hit an enemy with a Flare Gun or any of its variants, then they will stay on fire for a solid 7 seconds but we'll get to those later. The shotgun is also pretty standard. Being a great mid to close range weapon, the shotgun shoots bullets just like most other weapons in the game. If you've used it on other classes like soldier, heavy and engineer before, you already know how it acts. As for the pirate, the shotgun is a good weapon to use if an enemy is out of the range of your flamethrower to be of any use. That's right, just like Spy has other weapons other than the knife, the pyro also has other ways to damage enemies. As for their melee, the fire axe, it's pretty basic too. Dealing 65 damage per swing, you can take out most classes with 2 or 3 swings, with soldiers taking 4 and heavies taking 5, if they're on full health that is. So as you now know, Pyro is a great mid range to close range class, capable of dealing a ton of damage especially to unsuspected enemies, as well as hitting multiple enemies with the flamethrower. Speaking of flamethrower, the Pyro has many, many uses outside of it being able to deal damage. The first being the ever useful extinguish mechanic. A lot of new pyro players never seem to know that the flamethrower has more than one use because the mouse 2 button allows for two more with extinguishing being the first. If there's an enemy pyro, chances are that your teammate will be set on fire at one point or another. If there isn't a medic or health pack around, this makes you even more important. What you need to do is look at a teammate, being pretty close to them and hit the mouse 2 button. Not only will this extinguish them, stopping them from taking afterburn damage, but it will also net you a pretty handy 20 health. So if you see a player on your team on fire, put them out, it's a benefit for both you and them. The other useful mechanic by pressing mouse 2 is the air blast. You essentially air blast teammates to extinguish them, but it also has a very useful use against enemies in a lot of situations. For one, you can reflect projectiles back at the enemies. This is very handy for stopping enemies from pushing forwards or to help defend your team from oncoming attacks or even being affected by status changing effects such as the Sandman's ball slowing players down or the Gerati's mini crit enabling effect. While these smaller projectiles are quite difficult to reflect and don't really come into effect until you come across a demo man or a soldier, these two are the two classes that you'll want to focus on if you're intent on reflecting projectiles back. Rocket and grenade pills do massive damage if they hit you or a teammate, so reflecting them back will not only protect your team, but it will also do more damage to your enemies if you manage to hit them with the reflected projectiles. That, and it feels oh so good when you land a shot on them. So overall, if you see any type of projectile flying at you or your team, try and reflect it if it's possible. Oh, another good use for the air blast is if your enemies are close to a cliff or death pits, seen on maps like Hightower or Upward. Using it will push them back and guess what, if you push them off a cliff, it's an instant kill. So it's great for getting enemies off of objectives or just to buy your teammates more time to prepare or push them back more. Now onto a really important pyro section, spy checking. Spy checking is literally one of, if not the most important supportive pyro abilities you have. As you know at this point, hitting enemies with your flamethrower particles will set them on fire. However, if a spy is lurking around, you won't know who a spy is and who isn't. 
The most simple and effective way to check for spies is to spray a little fire at a teammate. If they aren't a spy, then nothing will happen and you can continue on with your day. But if they get set on fire, then they are definitely an enemy spy. Not only is this helpful for your unaware teammates, this also helps your teammates see who this ignited spy is and recognise that there's a threat and help you pick them off. But what if there's no one around and you know that there is a spy sneaking around your base or in your vicinity? Well, use the same tactic. However, do this in areas you think a spy will be hiding. Some of the most common areas spies usually hide in are corners or underneath staircases, but these aren't the definitive areas that they'll be hiding under. The best thing to do is to check areas you think that they'd be hiding. Of course, don't waste all your ammo doing this, otherwise you'll struggle to keep attacking other enemies. Just check around when possible and you'll be doing a huge favour to you and your team. Speaking of doing huge favours, engineers are great assets for a team to have and offer sentry defence and dispenser healing, as well as ammo regeneration for your whole team. The teleporters are also useful for helping you get to the front line faster. Well, why am I telling you this? Well, it's because pyros make great partners for engineers. Being a great pyro is useful for your engineer buddies. Having spies trying to take your buildings down is a nuisance for them and greatly affects your team, so having a pyro help to get rid of spies attacking them is very useful and lets them focus on protecting their buildings. If a spy does manage to kill your engineer friend and sap their stuff, your best option is to equip an Eon Annihilator or a Home Wrecker. Why? Well, because they're a Pyro's greatest support tool, as they both allow a Pyro to remove the sapper off of a building, essentially doing the engineer's job if they aren't there. To be the most effective Pyro possible, make sure to get rid of the spy first and then tend to the buildings. If the spy isn't taken care of, they can just keep attacking the buildings and take them down. If attacking all the time gets boring for you, assisting fellow engineers is beneficial for your whole team and gets you a whole lot of respect. Now that we've gone over all of the major uses for the Pyro, we'll go over their weapons very quickly. I'll show off their stats on screen and give a basic description and what I think its overall usefulness is for newer players. So, the stock flamethrower is very balanced overall, doing great damage and being useful in most situations, so it makes a great tool for new players. The backburner is a weapon more suited for sneak attacks by getting behind enemies. While this is hard to do as Pyro, it rewards you with more damage when attacking enemies from behind. However, it does cost more to air blast. I recommend this for players who know a map's layout more and can get behind enemies easily. The Degreaser is personally my favourite flamethrower. Its upsides allow you to switch to other weapons faster and switch to it faster as well, but costing more to air blast, not as much as the backburner however, and doing less afterburn damage. I recommend this for pyros who want to combo weapons faster and just being a useful weapon alongside your secondaries and melees. The Phlogistonator has a meter you can charge and when you activate the meter you will gain critical hits for a short period of time. The downsides for this are that you can't air blast and you can't get random crits. I suppose this is good for those who can use the crits effectively, otherwise it's just a worse stock flamethrower. And finally, for the primaries we have the Dragon's Fury. This shoots a fast moving projectile and does more damage to those on fire and charges air blast faster on a successful hit while charging it slower when it is used ineffectively. A solid side grade which rewards players with good aim. Use this if you want to improve on aim as a pyro. On to the secondaries now and the shotgun is a basic weapon. As I explained before it's great for mid to close range combat. A good choice overall. The flare gun is a projectile weapon that shoots a flare at and ignites enemies and deals critical damage to those who are already on fire. It takes a bit of learning to get used to it, but I recommend using this to dish out a lot of damage quick. The detonator is a flare variant that can be detonated to hit multiple enemies at once. It can also be used to flare jump, which is a small boost to a pyro's jump height. It's a neat side grade that isn't used enough with a lot of uses overall, so uh, get used to it as quickly as you can. The reserve shooter is a shotgun that allows you to switch to and from it faster and deals mini crit damage to those who are rocket jumping, knocked back using a grapple hook or using the thermal thruster at the cost of a small eclipse size. It's not recommended unless you see a lot of people jumping around such as soldiers and demos. The man melter, another flare gun variant that allows you to extinguish people just like the flamethrower, storing a critical hit and has the faster projectile speed at the cost of no random crits. Honestly, I would only recommend using this alongside a phlogistonator, as it allows you to extinguish teammates, which the phlogistonator cannot. 
The Scorch Shot is another flare gun that knocks back enemies when hit with it in a small radius and does mini crits and more knockback on enemies already on fire at the cost of less damage and more self damage force. This is a good flare to use if you can't really aim that well and good for hitting a bunch of enemies at once. The Panic Attack has more bullets per shot, faster deployment and has no random spread at the cost of less damage and successful shots being less accurate. It's alright for a bit of fun, not recommended though. Uh, the Thermal Thruster is a jetpack that allows you to fly over enemies and attack from behind or make a quick getaway if you're in trouble. This is great if you want to be a more mobile pyro. And finally, the Gas Passer, a throwable canister that coats any enemy that touches the liquid. If they are then hit, they will be ignited in flames. Great for stopping enemies at choke points, but not very useful anywhere else. And lastly, the melee weapons. The Fire Axe is the standard melee with no upsides or downsides. It's fine, but there are better options, but it is good for getting used to melees. The Extinguisher is an axe that deals mini crit damage to enemies and then extinguishes them after the hit. It also does bonus damage based on the remaining afterburn, and if you manage to kill a burning player, you receive a small speed boost. This all comes at the cost of less damage, no random crits, and a slower holster time. This weapon is great for a finishing blow, but in most other situations, it's not that useful. The Home Wrecker is a melee that deals double damage to buildings and able to remove sappers at the cost of doing less damage to players. This is a great support weapon recommended for defense more than offense. The power jack, when active, restores health on kill, allows you to move faster but makes you more vulnerable to all damage sources. Another good support weapon that helps pirates get to the front line faster. The back scratcher deals more damage and gives more health upon grabbing a health pack at the cost of getting healed slower from mediguns and dispensers. This is good for medieval mode and solo pyros, but not if you're trying to be pocketed. The sharpened volcano fragment engulfs an enemy in flames on hit at the cost of doing less damage. Not really recommended for anything, but it's good to mess around with. The third degree damages all enemies that are connected by medic beams with no downsides. Only use it if the enemy team has a lot of medics, otherwise it's pretty much the same as the fire axe. The Neon Annihilator deals critical hits to wet players and is able to remove sappers slower than the Home Wrecker, at the cost of doing less damage and having no random crits. This is good for maps with water or in conjunction with Mad Milk or Gerati. And finally, the Hot Hand gives the player a speed boost on hit while doing less damage. Pretty much only a meme weapon, don't use it to actually do well. And that basically covers the Pyro. Let me know if there's anything I missed down below and I'll amend it in a future video. Hopefully this will help you newer Pyro players learn about Pyro's true capabilities and not just use him as WM1 trash. If you're a more seasoned player, maybe you learned something new, as much as I doubt it, or maybe it was a nice refresh for you, who knows. Anyway, like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed, and as always, this has been your friendly neighbourhood Pyro Binocli, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.